It's Friday, the 12th of May, 2023. The last word in podcasting news. This is the Pod News Weekly Review with James Cridlin and Sam Sethi. I'm James Cridlin, the editor of Pod News. And I'm Sam Sethi, the CEO of Podfans. In the chapters today, ACAST Financials, Amazon paying people to listen to podcasts, Bumper's Listen Time, Broadcast to Podcast, and is it too soon to call podcasting on YouTube a flop? Plus... Hello, it's Rob Lowenthal from Spotify, and I'll be on later to talk about Megaphone's new broadcast to podcast technology. Hi, I'm Sharon Taylor. I am the SVP of Podcast Strategy at Triton Digital, and I'll be on later to talk about our broadcast to podcast strategy. I'm Darby Doris, Director of Content at Listen, and I'll be coming up a bit later to talk to you about the podcast show, what we're doing there, our original Unboxed, and the wider plans here at Listen. And Tom Billington will give us a preview of the podcast show in London later this month. If James had remembered, he would have asked Tom for an intro, but he forgot. What an idiot. They will. This podcast is sponsored and hosted by Buzzsprout. Last week, 3,994 people started a podcast with Buzzsprout. Podcast hosting made easy with powerful tools and remarkable customer support. And now you can turn your listeners into supporters with Buzzsprout subscriptions. Go on, give it a whirl with us at weekly.podnews.net. And we're brought to you by Pod News Live, where podcasting connects in Manchester in June. You can get your tickets today at podnews.net slash live. Pod News Live, live. where the podcast industry connects. Get your tickets now at podnews.net slash live. From your daily newsletter, the Pod News Weekly Review. So, James, let's kick this off with a little uh, stat. Over the last week, 215,550 podcasts published at least one new episode. That seems like a very good number. Yes, indeed. And actually, um, you will find uh, um, lots of data on the Podcast Business Journal website, podcastbusinessjournal.com, which is a sister publication uh, to uh, Pod News. And uh, another bit of data on there is that there was a new podcast episode posted every 0.9 seconds last uh, in the last 30 days, which is uh, which is interesting. I know that we last uh, week gave a number of 1.5 seconds, but apparently it's 0.9 seconds. So, um, so there's a thing. Anyway, yes, lots of exciting numbers. Talking of numbers, ACAST released their financials. Um, Ross Adams and Emily Villate released their Q1 2023 results. Um, what was the overall view of it, James? Well, the overall view is um, it's uh, slow and steady wins the race. Uh, I think they have uh, seen net sales growing 11% for the quarter year on year. Uh, which is £25.8 million. Pounds. pounds. Mm, there's a thing. Uh, though uh, net sales in North America actually dropped a little bit. Um, so perhaps there are two stories going on. There's, a, there's the story of podcasting out of North America and there's the story uh, everywhere else. Anyway, they're working with 2,300 advertisers across the uh, globe as well. And they say that they now host more than 100,000 registered podcasts globally. Uh, which is uh, quite a number. Having said that, they're not quite profitable yet, are they? No, they didn't quite hit that number, but they have got 100 million monthly unique listeners, which is, again, another good stat for them. I think the overall is that they're cutting down on costs and they're slowly increasing their revenues, uh, which will eventually, in 2024, I think they're targeted to hit proper profitability. Indeed. And uh, it all looks as if everything is going in the right direction. So well done to ACAST. That's a splendid thing. Meanwhile, uh, other companies beginning with A are getting out the checkbook, aren't they? Yeah, well, I think it's if you can't beat them, pay them. Um, It seems (laughs) Amazon, down your way, mate, um, are paying some Australian listeners, God, you're going to be rich, uh, in vouchers just for listening to a podcast on a platform. Uh, First of all, why? And secondly of all, how much money have you made, James? (laughs) Well, I am not eligible, apparently. Um, I think this is for people that haven't yet listened to a podcast on Amazon Music. And if you're one of those people, then you can claim five Australian dollars, which is about $3.39 in uh, Freedom Cash. 
uh, just for listening to a podcast on the platform. So you'd need to download the Amazon Music app and then uh, have a listen to a show on there. Really interesting seeing uh, Amazon basically um, trying to really push the amount of trial going on on that uh, platform. So uh, I just mentioned that the Pod News Daily is just five minutes long. You have to listen to a podcast all the way through. Um, So, you know, a nice, quick uh, podcast is always a good plan. Uh, So you can give that a go if you are eligible, but uh, there's a special link that you've probably been emailed if you are. Um, So uh, give that a go. They've also been um, buying other things, not just listeners, but they've been buying an AI platform called <laughs> Snackable, which they apparently they bought at the end of last year. Tech from that will appear in the Amazon Music app. And uh, they're doing pretty well from um, podcasting anyway. Amazon's CloudFront uh, is on a 12-month high in terms of the podcast uh, share, 51.56% of all new podcast episodes in April were being hosted on Amazon's CloudFront in some way, shape or form. So they're doing particularly well. Whatever happens if that uh, system falls over, um, Mm. you won't be able to get any podcasting. You won't be able to get any of our websites as well, I tell you, because both uh, the Pod News website uh, and the Podcast Business Journal uh, are also on there too. So, uh, yeah, so who knows what's going on there? Well, we're hoping to get Craig Strachan, who's the Amazon European Podcasting Director, onto the show. That's if I can get past the PR people who are being gatekeepers this week uh, and last (laughs) week and the week after and the week after. But if they can get out of the way, Craig will love to come on the show so hopefully he will in a few weeks time i'm looking forward to seeing him uh, in a couple of weeks when i'm in london um and uh, of course um you know you you will too because the podcast show is coming isn't it it is it's it's i think i feel like we've been talking about this for nine months feels like the gestation of a baby but it is here i am actually <laughs> looking forward to this one um it is yeah. based on last year's show which was fantastic well done to the team there this one looks bigger and better. So, yes. Are you excited, James? Yes, I'm, I'm very excited. Um, I am doing the opening keynote, uh, which is going to be very cool. Um, uh, please, if you're going to get to the podcast show. Sorry, sorry. I've got to ask. Suit, no oh, suit. Oh, suit. Just oh, got to most be Most definitely suit. Oh, most definitely. It's a dress up. Well um, done. Yes. Most definitely, yes. Um, you have to get that early if you are doing the podcast show, because I'm on at 9.10 a.m. I think doors open at 8.30. So please turn up nice and early. I'm in the Amplify Theatre. Uh, it's a theatre for 400 people, so um, uh, I don't want it to be half empty. Uh, but, but I am the warm-up guy for Ashley Flowers. If you come to see me, then also you get to see Crime Junkies Ashley Flowers, so that's a good thing. There's some real excitement about this uh, event, so I caught up with Tom Billington from the podcast show, and I asked him what he's looking forward to. First of all, just to say we're so excited to have it back. You know, after a first year... Um, where we going in this time last year when we spoke, we we had big plans. We were selling the dream. We knew what we wanted to do, but then when we delivered it, it was we have been blown away by the response to year one, and then now leading into year two, where we are, are at mm. with it as well. In terms of the international reach, we always wanted to have an international show and so an opportunity there. But really, as we're just over a week out now. And we see the numbers that are coming in and traveling from around the world. You know, over 35 countries are represented through our speaker program and through the delegates that are coming. Obviously, good showing from Europe, Mm -hmm. as you'd expect, in the UK. But, you know, like yourself, traveling over from, from Australia and that region and Asia, South America and the US as well, bringing the community together. That's what I'm really looking forward mm. to, you know, getting everyone under one roof in, in London. And it's great to see for this year as well, um, as we head into year two, the organic nature of it as well. So as the community is coming together, people are taking the opportunity around Islington and around London for pop-up events and just really using that gathering throughout the, you know, the show's mm. two days on the, the 24th and 25th with a preview night that we're doing on the 23rd. But around the week, the community is coming together and, and using that time in London um, to really, yeah, to get together and um, 
and meet and have meaningful conversations outside of the show as well, which is amazing to see. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the Pod News drinks, which are happening uh, the, yep. the previous the previous night. Don't ask to come if you've not been asked. Then uh, then you're not coming. Um, <laughs> but uh, in terms of uh, in terms of what's new this year, you've added a preview night. Yeah, we have. Yeah, I mean, again, because we saw a lot of people travel to London for, for the show, we wanted to maximise it out. And that preview night really, it's on the 23rd, it's three hours. It's a real, it's an intimate look at the show. Everything will be set within the venue. Um, we're handing out a Trailblazer Award, which is new for this year. So it's really looking at someone on the international, mm-hmm. um, within the international industry, who's making amazing moves, who's doing brilliant things. And that's going to Ashley Flowers this year. Um, and so, you know, we've looked at mm-hmm. what Ashley's been doing within, obviously, the True Crime Express and building her brand out and again using the platform of podcasting but really have created an amazing platform globally um so we're handing out the award and, and giving that honor out and then we've what we've done as well for this year is we've built out um an advisory panel which we thought was really important because you know with the show positioned well uh, on the international scale we wanted to make sure that as we grow we do it in a way that is representative of of the industry and that we've so we pulled together 10 people mm. from different parts of the industry again on the international um looking at it internationally from those in the US like Oren Rosenbaum um or Donald Albright as um as well from Tenderfoot TV looking at the UK market with uh, production company uh, leaders as well and it's really just who that those 10 people are there to hold us to account and, and make sure that we're on the right track with the show. And they helped with the the advisory of who were given the Trailblazer Award to. They'll be there on preview night as well. Um, other things for preview mm-hmm. night is that we'll have an in conversation with Fern Cotton, um, who is, you know, UK based podcaster, done brilliant things, building out Happy Place, the brand as well. So we're really just wanting to shine a spotlight on the show people uh, that can come down there's a few tickets left for for that but again it's an intimate first look at what's going on all the stands will be set and exhibitors will be there it's really just a a pre-party to what's to come um for people that are in london that that night before yeah and i'm looking forward you mentioned ashley flowers i'm looking forward to being her warm-up man uh on the wednesday morning uh which should be uh, great fun (laughs) Um, and uh, yeah, it, I mean, it sounds it sounds a really great show. I know that we've got uh, later on in this show, we've got Darby Doris uh, from uh, Listen, and we'll be talking to him about what uh, his company has been doing for the show as well. Is attendance looking good? Is it up on last year? Yeah, it is. So we um, we had about five thousand three hundred through the doors last year, and already we've we've outsold that. So you know great. we're in a really wow. healthy place. We're mm-hmm. looking at probably around six and a half thousand people t- for the daytime event. Um, again, which is we we are ecstatic about. And again, it's we're always looking to build. So mm-hmm. you know, wh- whatever level you are within the industry, this we want to make the show for you. You know, and ticket prices again, we've wanted to make as accessible as possible. Um, you know, for it's the thirty pound ticket for under thirties, it's sixty nine pounds for a daytime ticket. Um, you know, so we want to make sure that whether you're just starting out as a creator, right through to the professional um, production companies and the marketeers, through to the CEOs, this show is really for you. So, in terms of ticket sales and and those that are coming through through the doors, yeah, we we feel super happy at where we are, um, and just encourage people to get the tickets now before um, before the show because I can't imagine too many will be available on the door this year. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and if you use the uh, the coupon code pod news then who knows you might save a little bit more money on those uh, tickets which are very reasonably priced anyway what what sort of people go to this there's a there's a thought from our friends in america that podcasting in the uk well it's just the bbc and some other radio broadcasters and that's kind of it um what, what, is there lots of radio broadcasters uh, there or what what uh, what kind of um split is there in terms of people I mean, we are just down the road from the UK's broadcast industry hub. Um, we're a stone's throw away from King's Cross, um, where there's the media district now as well in London. So, you know, the BBC is there in a big way, yes, of course. But then Acast and Amazon Music uh, and Wondery are our headline sponsors this year. You've got Spotify returning 
global uh, back in a big way as well and sony music entertainment so you've got the the core in the podcasting and the and the audio space and the traditional media brands as well um new partners for this year just to give a bit of context around that as well so sky news are going to be uh, coming down in in a big way they're going to be broadcasting live from the show on the wednesday morning as well which we're really excited mm-hmm. about that's a great addition um you mentioned listen as well so the production company element of of the the industry is showing up this this year as well more so than than last year which is brilliant to see obviously the lifeblood of the creativity of the of the podcasting industry and you know just to mention listen as well they've got their own stage this year as well which is the rise up and they've programmed that. I want, you know, if Dobby's going to talk about what they've got coming up on that, I want, uh, I'll just tease that. But it's brilliant. And they've done an amazing job at br- looking at the, the industry in a way that just the vibrancy of it and not just a traditional way. Um, other areas, just to give context of those that are coming down, New York Times are one of our partners this year as well well as tortoise media so that, that those news brands the guardian are coming back as well interestingly what mm-hmm. we've seen is an is an uplift in um talent agencies wanting to put their talent forward obviously huge uh, you know podcasting for um for talent and, and traditional presenters um in the media space is is massive uh, and the attention of the the agents to the show like ymu united talent wme putting their talent forward has been good to see as well but in terms of who it's for whatever level within the industry the, the show is for you if you're a creator an independent creator we want to make the show feel inviting to you as much as we do to the to the big companies that i've just mentioned as well so if you are looking to get a ticket and you are a creator you will be able to come and an acast have got a what's called um, creator economy corner it's a it's a corner of the show that they acast have taken over which is inviting like a genius bar if you walked in the apple store where you can get advice on every different aspect of of starting out whether that's marketing or socials or hosting um that's scattered throughout the show as well. That advice and inspiration is is there for you. So I just want to make sure that we're landing that point that we've got the big brands there, but this is really for the for the independent community as well. Yeah, well, very good. Um, the website is thepodcastshowlondon.com. Um, and as I say, if you use the code PODNEWS, then uh, who knows, that might save you uh, a little bit of money. So looking forward to it, Tom, in a couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to coming home uh, and uh, seeing if, um, you know, if London is still uh, standing. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. I look forward to uh, seeing you then. Looking forward to seeing you. <laughs> There we go, Tom Billington. Uh, and yes, uh, it, I think it will be. If you haven't got your tickets already, I suggest you do. You can still buy tickets for the event using the code PODNEWS and you'll get a discount. Uh, and if you also, you get to see James as well. So it's a double whammy. Yes, you get to see me in the suit and everything else. So that's going to be good. Really looking forward to, to that and uh, more news about what's going on at that show a little bit later on in this one. Now. A couple of weeks ago, Spotify launched uh, their broadcaster podcast platform uh, with Megaphone. They bought at the end of 2021 uh, a company called Wooshka out of Australia, which was owned by a guy called Rob Lowenthal. Uh, The technology platform that they bought let radio broadcasters turn their existing audio content into on-demand podcast content. And I used it for my radio station, River Radio, and it worked like a dream. Uh, Today, we're excited, they say, to share that the technology is now available for any publisher with a Megaphone account. Well, we talked about this, James, about is this a trend, given that you've got both your radio hat and your podcast hat on? Do you see this being the next stage for radio people? I think it's certainly important for radio people to be getting uh, the most out of the content that they produce. I mean, obviously, you know, their content is the thing that makes them unique. And so any way of taking the content that they have on the air and making that also available on podcast platforms makes a bunch of sense. So uh, there's certainly a good reason why you should be doing that sort of thing. Well, we reached out to Rob Lowenthal and I asked him to tell me more about what's the new megaphone platform for Broadcast the Podcast. Back in the day, probably seven or eight years ago, I was running a radio network here in Australia called Macquarie Radio. It was a talk radio network. And I remember thinking that it was difficult 
to take on air content and then repurpose it, republish it as a podcast. So I remember thinking that the producers were having a hard time and they were spending a lot of time after they finished the shift trying to make this content. And that's why broadcast podcast tools were built by us. It was really initially to help radio station producers save time making podcasts. Most sensible radio networks understood that they'd made content once and what they should be doing was making that content work a little harder for them. So once once it's gone out live across the airwaves, repurpose that content and share it as a podcast as well. Obviously, it doesn't cost any more in terms of content creation. It's already been made once, but it gives you another opportunity to, first of all, appeal to your listeners who may have missed that show for the day, but second of all, make some money. So make some more money digitally as opposed to the ads that you were previously running on your on your radio broadcast. So, you know, in a very basic form, we built this technology to help radio broadcasters save time and make money. And they make money right now through plugging into to Megaphone, repurposing this content, uh, and then also plugging into what we call SPAN, the, Spot, the Spotify Podcast Audience Network, which is an advertising opportunity for them to have ads play against the podcasts that they've just taken from the on-air environment to the new off-air environment in a podcast. I think in that sense, that's a great way because I think radio people, I mean, you know, we knew each other from when I had River Radio. That second bite of the cherry was always a very good way of doing it. And also the way that people consume content on demand or live, it gave that opportunity for people to do that. And also the good thing is Spotify has just expanded this span network across Europe. So it's now available in more countries across Europe. So, you know, that on the back of it for monetization. Is this broadcast to podcast though only available now as a Spotify platform? So previously under Wushka, obviously I knew that I could then take any radio signal I gave you in the schedule that we created that would then go to Apple, Google, and Spotify. Has this now just become a Spotify tool? Oh, no, definitely not. So it's still, it's only available to Megaphone Enterprise customers. Uh, It's available in their dashboard when they sign up. So it's out of the box, ready to go. You configure it yourself. You add the stream information. It can be ICCast, Shoutcast, or HLS. You add that information into your uh, dashboard. And then you identify what kind of content you want removed from the feed. So once you've set up the time that you want it to record, you might want to record between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. Monday to Friday, you'll then identify, and we also want to remove silence. We want to remove music. We want to remove a bunch of different stuff. Or you might want to identify inaudible tones that are 25 megahertz. And when those tones play from the studio, you're going to, you're going to, use that to identify where an advertising cue point and so on should be. But importantly, it's available out of the box. You put your stream URL information in and then it's live, it's recording. And essentially you're also running advertising in that podcast as well because those cue points where we replace on-air ads and on-air music with cue points in the podcast, they're capable of receiving an ad from the SPAN network. Do those ads have a pre-qualification in terms of numbers of downloads or listens or anything? Is there a pre-requirement or can is it, you know, once you've signed up, you can create points within the recording that the ad will serve at that point? Is there a pre-requirement on that ad? No, there's not. So there's anyone who's a Megaphone Enterprise customer who's also opted into the SPAN network for advertising mm-hmm. can make the most of this tool and also the ads that will run in the content. So the podcasts themselves put the cue points go in in places where the advertisements were on the radio broadcast. Maybe where music has been removed. The cue points will go in where there was metadata saying here's an ad. So these various cue points are going in into the file and then the advertisements will run. The producer always has the chance to overwrite anything in that audio file. So they might log into the dashboard and look at their the audio file after the shift and remove some of those cue points. Um, everything that happens in this environment is non-destructive. So that whole recording is saved inside your megaphone dashboard 
And the cue points are just identifying segments where the technology, the AI, it uses quite sophisticated AI technology, where they think that the content should be replaced. But if a producer of a show says, no, we don't think that content should be replaced, they can just remove those cue points and then everything will run as normal. Okay. And what's the plan going forward then? You know, where does this functionality go next? What do you think you can add that will enhance what you've got? I think in the first instance, we really want to now help broadcasters earn additional advertising revenue. You know, the the two things that when I talk to broadcasters, the two things they're keen on doing are improving their audience share, growing their audience, or, or improving the advertising revenue. So we're always focused on the customer and we really want to help them improve their advertising revenue through SPAN is the next step. So we'll be looking at product features in that regard. But we really like the way that we've used certain AI technologies to identify, for example, different tones that come through from a broadcast studio. So you might set a tone that comes through at 30 megahertz for weather or 25 megahertz for traffic. And we can identify that content and change it or replace it. You may in the future even want to use certain technology to insert automatic AI-generated content as well into those cue points. So that's the kind of thing that would build the foundations in the technology now that one day in the future that's the kind of thing that you can do with this broadcast in real time. One of the things I think Spotify has got a really unique position in the world is that it is global, it is a music player, and it must have, therefore, licenses globally with all of the various bodies that take licensing fees because that's one of the biggest things that you know we know trying to broadcast a podcast that had music in it onto the internet some people might just ignore it other people for example will allow that through but if you were taking a radio show let's say a breakfast show which has got a lot of music in it and you wanted to rebroadcast that through your platform today all that music would have to be taken out because there's no license for that out of country anyway would you see spotify being the one platform maybe that would provide that capability because you've got things like ai dj and you've got things like the radio capability that they produced last year a couple of years ago where so it feels like it's sort of edging its way towards this ability where actually you know what Put the whole of your show in, we'll deal with the licensing. Oh, look, it's an interesting idea. Certainly, I'm not aware of any anything that's proposed or on the roadmap at the moment. But look, you know, Spotify do have wonderful relationships around the world with musicians and artists. You know, they've got more than 500 million monthly listeners, you know, on platform, you know, or monthly average users. So they certainly understand music. I think really what we're focusing on here is podcasting. I know that when I worked in the radio industry that we did strike deals with the local license agencies and the APRA and so on to stream music online and that required for the radio broadcasters to pay a separate fee and I believe they can also opt in to pay a separate fee for when they want to publish music inside of podcasts. So there are different licenses and different legal regimes around the world and so I wouldn't comment probably on how it works all around the world but definitely an interesting and novel idea for the future. Okay, we'll watch this space. (laughs) Rob, okay, tell us where we can go and find more about this new broadcaster podcast solution that you've got. Yeah, absolutely. If you just go to the megaphone.fm webpage, there's a tile there to click on for broadcaster podcast, uh, and that'll take you straight into all the information about broadcaster podcasts and how no radio networks around the world can make the most of this technology. Rob Lowenthal from uh, Spotify um, and uh, talking about uh, broadcast to podcast. He's not the only company to end up uh, doing that, uh, is he, Sam? No, we, we got a, uh, a, a message uh, from the wonderful Triton. Sharon Taylor reached out to us and said, look, hey, do you know we've been doing this for a little while as well? So we thought, oh, okay, well, I didn't. And uh, so we reached out to Sharon. She's another Aussie, mate. You know, we, you, you lot. Are- she is another Aussie. There seems to be something weird and wonderful going on with Australians in this particular uh, area. But yes, Omni Studio was actually, when it uh, first appeared, it was doing integrations with uh, radio companies all over the place and doing some really interesting ideas. The original uh, name for the company was uh, One to One Cast. And you caught up with uh, Sharon Taylor to ask more about Omni Studio. 
Triton is, I guess, the Airbus or Boeing to the audio industry. So for 16 plus years, Triton started out as a streaming provider. So it did all the radio streaming and digital streaming for much of the world and had this vision to take audio into the digital space out of terrestrial. And so today we do a pile of stuff. We obviously still have the streaming business. We have a streaming measurement. So we have a accredited streaming measurement system so to measure streaming all around the world. We also have podcast metrics, which does the same for podcasting. We have the Omni Studio product, which is where I came into Triton from for the podcast CMS distribution, hosting a huge monetization side of the company, including the world's first programmatic SSP for audio and probably something else that I'm forgetting that my boss is going to be angry about, but that's a pretty good overview. Oh, yeah, no, that's a pretty good overview. And if he is angry, just send him my way. Now, the other part of this was we were talking about on Pod News about broadcast to podcast, right, as a, I suppose, a trend in the industry that's been around and radio stations are slowly waking up to the idea that on-demand podcasts of their live radio shows is a good thing to do. And, you know, Triton then said, hey, by the way, we do this. So what do you do? Ah, great question. Okay, so yes, we at Omni Studio, so before we were part of Triton, in 2015, we built a way to capture a live stream and turn it into on-demand content. And for a long time, our slogan was on air to online in seconds. We actually built it as a sneaky way, way back in the day. Like we had a consumer app, the same as every podcast startup seems to have nowadays, and thinking that we would change the world for podcast discovery and consumption. And we needed more content in there, more timely, small, bite-sized pieces of content. So we originally started talking to radio stations back in 2014 to say, hey, you have mic breaks, and usually it's localised, it's relevant, it's hopefully interesting, entertaining. And so we built this live stream capture to enable the stream to be chunked up into the Omni Studio UI and then repurposed either in segments onto social media or as a full podcast into the RSS. And so the way that I would do it, so with my radio station that I had, we used Wooshka and they gave me a schedule. I put in the schedule of the programs. I then gave them my RMTP feed. That was then converted by them into Apple, Google, and Spotify. Is that exactly how you guys work, or is there any Not differences? exactly, but it's similar. So we have a few different stream capture abilities. Like we work with most of the largest broadcasters around the world, and so a lot of them have like HLS streams, for mm-hmm. instance. And so we capture all of that. We read out of the metadata queues. So we have two different flavors of the agents, I guess you could say. We have one on-premise, which is just a tiny executable file that sits Mm -hmm. in that the broadcast managers can go in and create a schedule. So to your point, I think we can, at the moment, I think we've got maybe 2,000 different programs that record at any one given time with just like the recording agents. And you can tell it when to start and stop through cue points or through silence detection mm-hmm. in the mics. And then you can either manually turn that and distribute it out to Apple or I think 2018, don't hold me to it, but a few years ago we built a way to automatically do it as well right. with this idea that you know most of the US radio stations especially are quite time poor. And so if we could free them up from putting the show together, then they could, the theory was, make more original content. Now, one of the things in podcasting, putting your podcasting hat back on, is the podcast namespace and something called the live item tag. I don't know if you've come across it much. It's this ability for you to put the HLS server, basically, that you mentioned, or the RMTP server, into your RSS feed. And so apps that can read the RSS feed with the live item tag support can say, ah, that show is a podcast or it's a radio station and it's actually now going live at this moment and it lights up and tells people oh okay as a push notification you are now live and so for example adam curry and dave jones do a friday night show podcast index the podcast show and everyone on various apps fountain or curio caster or various other ones podverse for example that you could you get a notification oh that show's just gone live and it's like fundamentally the radio station telling you your show's now live now I don't know if you've come across that at all. No, I haven't, no. So we're familiar with the Namespace Project, although what they've stopped calling it that now, and it's... SP. 
Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and so we implemented the transcript tag a little while ago. It's that's chicken and egg for us, unfortunately. Like you want the wider majority of apps to do it, but I haven't looked into that. I will. Most of our clients have got their own apps. Mm -hmm. And so I suppose we kind of see ourselves as like Switzerland in that, which is they already have their app for live and podcasts that they want to drive people to. Mm -hmm. But that's fascinating. That could be something really interesting to look at yeah. for them. Thank Maybe. you. We'll have an offline conversation. But where do you see the product evolving from your part, ignoring what we've just talked about? Where does, you know, Triton's plan, do you see more radio stations? Is that just the, you know, get a market share of radio stations or is there product features you see developing within the application itself? Probably a little bit of both. I mean, market share for us is pretty good. Like I think we, at any one point in time, like almost 2 million downloads every, not downloads, recordings every 30 days. So coverage wise, we're good. Obviously, as more international markets wake up to podcasting, this is a nice entryway for them. They can get started with content that their listeners are already used to, but move it into an on-demand space. Refining things continually, obviously, is important. So I think a little bit of both. Yeah. So one of the things that Spotify, having taken Wooshka on into Megaphone, are, are uh, adding the spam network, their advertising network on top. How do you offer your customers the ways of monetizing their content? So we do a lot of direct sold. So we are very neutral. So as opposed to Spotify with our sales team, we don't want to compete with our own publishers on the platform. And so we provide them more of like a tool set and then we really live and breathe that whole Switzerland neutral. And so give them all of that power to do it themselves. So they can replace the ad breaks with the stream and obviously automatically put in a marker for monetization for ads that they're selling that are more podcast specific as opposed to traditionally shouty radio ads, which need to be shouty to get your attention in the car. And then also they can hook into the programmatic exchange. And so they can then monetize the show on both a live, on-demand and podcast method mm -hmm. through that programmatic pipe. Cool. Now, lastly, YouTube. I mean, again, coming into the market, video is being talked about. Spotify has video, Apple has video, and of course, YouTube itself. Would you ever see the product evolving from let's say, radio to YouTube? Yes, yes, I think so. I mean, we already have clients that are publishing on YouTube. YouTube's had a bit of a battering in the press of late, I think, with the podcast numbers. Like it hasn't become Don't an worry. overnight sensation and everyone Shh. seems to be like clubbing it a little bit. <laughs> when James and I might be involved in clubbing it today as well. That's... <laughs> it reminds me of the Simpson meme, like, stop, stop, it's already dead. <laughs> I think I think that the podcast industry in general, we're really big on like shiny things. And, you know, to your point, Apple has had video podcasts on their platform for a long while. And if people wanted to watch a podcast, they would have. Yeah. I think YouTube's really interesting, especially for broadcast. Like if you think like the top 5% of broadcasters already put shows out on YouTube, they already have like live streams. They like, that is what we're trained to watch. I don't know that anyone wants to watch us as two individuals, well, no offence to either of us, like doing this, just, you know. Just be clear, nobody wants to be, watch me and James, that's for Yeah, certain. I mean, the beauty of podcasting is that I can go on and do interviews or interview other people and, like, I don't even know what this thing is behind me, but it doesn't matter, like, <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. But, no, I mean, obviously radio stations are wanting to get into video. Like, it's another mm -hmm. audience. It's not cannibalistic, which I think a lot of people have been wary about, that they don't want to go onto YouTube and then cannibalise their audience but it is additive from what we're seeing in our tests at the moment. And so we'll be rolling out some YouTube stuff in the coming months and we're pretty confident that a new audience will emerge for a very specific set of shows. Yeah, we've, we're beginning to see a lot of radio shows over in the UK. Talk Sport constantly are pushing out all of their radio shows as video shows now and Global with the News Agent, which is one of the bigger hits here in the UK, is certainly pushing that out. So, yeah, I can see a lot more of that. Now, tell me if I wanted to find out more about Triton and I wanted to find out more about this broadcast or podcast, where would I go, Sharon? You can hit tritondigital.com. You could head to omnistudio.com. You could just Google it and I'm sure we'll come up. Brilliant. Sharon Taylor, thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. 
There we go, Sharon. Again, somebody who will be in London with us as well, James. <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely. And, and uh, looking forward to seeing uh, Sharon. She's a good egg. Um, there are a few other companies who are doing this. Stream Guys is another company uh, who has been doing a bit of broadcast to podcast as well. And I think the main thing, uh, and it's something that I will be talking about at the next radio conference that I'm at, which is Radio Days North America, uh, which is happening at the beginning of June, Neither uh, Spotify nor uh, Omni Studio and Triton are talking about the lit tag, which is uh, the tag that allows your podcast to go live. And that, to me, is a pretty sort of weird thing, why you wouldn't um, focus on that if you were focusing on a broadcaster podcast platform, why you wouldn't be at least aware of the uh, lit tag, even if you're not actually working on it right now. Mm. Spotify, I didn't expect to, because that would mean they'd have to support the podcast namespace, and that's never going to happen. But with Sharon, um, it's interesting. She was interested to know more about it. So you never know, Triton might actually integrate. They already support the transcript tag, so they've already got elements of the podcast namespace. Yeah in their offering. So this would just be a nice little extension for them. Yeah, indeed. And of course, you know, another place where you can be alerted when you go live is at YouTube. And there was a report from Ashley Carmen uh, last week saying podcasting on YouTube is a flop so far, which, you know, again, pretty good headline. Um, it, was it clickbait, James, or was it real? Was she just pointing out a, a failure of YouTube? No, I mean, it's it, it's certainly real, um, I think. I think Ashley has, um, uh, you know, realised that there's public data available in PodTrack and there's public data available on YouTube. You know, YouTube shows the number of views uh, and PodTrack, you can work out uh, roughly what uh, shows are doing. So, for example, if you just look at NPR, for example, NPR um, is doing 168 million global downloads per month. So that's a pretty good number for their 40, 49 active shows. But if you have a look at their shows on YouTube, then they are doing... 179 views. No, it's not 179 million. That's just 179. Um, so yeah, the the figures are not particularly fantastic. Now th th that said, um, Ashley had those figures. I shared Pod News Daily's figures, which are even worse. In fact, um, uh, YouTube accounts for 0.9 percent of all um, uh, of all uh, consumption of the Pod News Daily. Um, so you know, clearly, again, it's uh, showing that um, you know podcasts about podcasts don't necessarily work too well on YouTube, as you would kind of expect. We'd even worse on Spotify, by the way. But when you um, have a look at other shows, they're doing fantastically, aren't they? Well, they say they are. So uh, following the reporting about dismal YouTube numbers, Folding Pocket contacted you with details of Upfront with Simon Jordan, which was launched last week. Mm. So for those who don't know, that is actually a misleading piece of content. Right. Talk Sport Radio have been broadcasting all of their live radio shows on YouTube now for nearly two years. Simon Jordan's show, 10 o'clock in the morning on Talk Sport, is one of the biggest shows that Talk Sport has. And of course, he's already built up a massive audience on YouTube with that first show. So all they've done is launch the second show, which they've been promoting on Talk Sport for a gazillion weeks to say Simon's going to be doing an interview show with um, various Talk Sport other presenters like Graham Souness. No wonder you get an instant audience and a massive uplift. That is nothing to do with podcasting. So it's not a podcast. Well. And it's a video show that is translated from an existing audience that already was promoted heavily. Yeah, well, there you go. This is why it's important to have people in lots of different countries so that they can actually tell you the hidden side of that particular story. Because I looked at that and I thought, well, you know, they're number one sports podcast on Spotify right now. They're number one on Apple podcasts right now. But they've also got more than half a million views on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So they're doing really, really well with these um you know, uh, very red faced looking men uh, shouting about football. Yeah. Um, and uh, yes, uh, but um, I, I was unaware of the because I have no interest in sports ball. And I know that you are you are a big fan of um, 
of the Liverpool. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> so clearly that's uh, that's uh, going to be a work. But uh, yeah, so it's um, uh, okay. So that's clearly not necessarily comparing like with like there. Not at all. No, I thought I'd just point that mm, out for you. Well. Well, there you go. Always two sides of every story, uh, uh, aren't there? I think it's way too early. And I think it's also worth pointing out, of course, there are no podcasts on YouTube music in the UK either. Um, I went through a, a week or so of using podcasts on YouTube music here uh, because I have the technology to basically say to my phone, I want you to to put all of my YouTube uh, traffic through the US, please. And so then I got podcasts on YouTube Music, um, and, it, and it's fine, but it's all right. It, it is, there's nothing particularly clever about the YouTube Music app. So, um, and I, I should point out, uh, to, uh, just yesterday, uh, Google ended up uh, promoting a brand new um, tablet or something, household tablet with a dock. And during the launch of this new oh, tablet yes. that Google were presenting, <laughs> Google, the company that owns YouTube, stood there and said, well, what could you use this for? Well, you could use, you could use it for Spotify to listen to podcasts. Brilliant. Another triumph, YouTube. Uh, well. uh, so <laughs> who knows what's going on there? Bless them. But still, there you go. Moving on. Uh Podcast protection. Look, it seems this week uh, oh, yes. NewsGuard, a news reliability data service, has announced it's entering into podcasting today. I didn't really get this story. And then there's a secondary story, James, that says Barometer has announced a partnership with NewsGuard to detect misinformation in podcast episodes. Now, I, I just sort of went, oh, whatever. And then suddenly there was Mark from Captivate and then there was Todd and Rob getting all heated and then there was Dave Jackson and Daniel J. Lip. And I, I was like, wow, okay, I don't understand why everyone's getting heated other than there's someone checking the content of a podcast and determining if the advertising is appropriate. But everyone seems to be um, thinking this is a bad thing. So James, tell me what's going on. Well, so apparently you've got journalists, you've got human beings at a, this company called NewsGuard that are looking at news and information podcasts based on five journalistic criteria. Um, and those uh, criteria are conveys news on important topics responsibly, whatever that is, um, does not regularly convey false, unchallenged information, uh, is not dominated by one-sided opinion or discloses or does not have a political agenda and all of this kind of stuff. And so based on their judgment, a podcast receives a score from 0 to 10, which is a risk level and is accompanied by a detailed nutrition label that explains the score. So as an example, they say that the journal from the Wall Street Journal gets 10 out of 10, gets a green label, and everybody's happy with that. Crooked Media's Pod Save America, which is um, most certainly one-sided, um, I've been listening to the UK version this week, that receives a green 9 out of 10 score. Uh, in terms of uh, that particular show. But if you look at uh, MSNBC's The Read Out, for example, that gets only 5 out of 10, and Louder with Crowder, whatever that is, also gets a 5 out of 10 score. So there are th these anonymous uh, journalists sitting in a room basically working out whether or not um, these particular podcasts are good or bad or not and giving them all scores. Um, so I don't know anything about these journalists. Uh, I don't know where, the, where they're coming from in terms of that. The, the, the thing that is more concerning, not, not just NewsGuard, these anonymous journalists sit, sitting there basically saying, is this any good or not? Um, is Barometer, who are using the NewsGuard research to train their AI so that their AI detection works out whether or not this episode is likely to contain a false narrative. So is it likely to be true or is it likely to be false? And they're using AI. I mean, at the end of the day, this is people's um, uh, jobs we're talking about. This is people's um, uh, revenue we're talking about. And some AI tool, which is being trained by these journalists hiding away in a room, doing their news reliability data service. I think this is a dreadful idea. And, and the worst thing that I would want, being in a very different country, 
is for some American journalists to be passing comment on the contents of this podcast, which is put together by an Australian and a Brit. Uh, well, I mean, two Brits, but you know what I mean. Why the Americans think they that they should be arbiters of truth um, when uh, you look at the clusterfuck of that particular country, <laughs> who knows what's going on? <laughs> so, um, yes, I'm, I'm, I, I, it's, it's all a bit rubbish. I just call it fake news. Um, that's easy. That, that seems to be the easiest way of getting around it. No, look, this is like Google SEOing, and and fundamentally they will change the the output of their content in order to attract better advertising, in order to uh, make more money, which then doesn't really take into account what the listener might want. It just happens to be what the advertiser wants. Mm. And of course, you and I probably, well, I certainly, you you latterly will. Um, say, well, look, why don't you just use value for value and micro payments, and then you don't need to worry about what the advertiser thinks because you can say what you like. Then, but hey, that's a little way down the road. Now, you could you could turn around and say, well, this is well, this is good. Um, people will need to be more fair and balanced uh, in order for them to get more ad revenue, and and this is a good thing. And uh, you know, and the more reliable and the more truthful a podcast is, then the better it's going to be in terms of in terms of ad revenue. But it's not necessarily going to work that way either. And of course, you know, as is usually the way with these uh, tools, I can't find out whether or not they've uh, vetted this particular show or any other shows that I do, or the newsletter that I produce, um, I have no idea. Uh, and I'm not going to pay hundreds of dollars a month, which is which is what they want, to find out whether or not um, I'm a reliable source. Um, I, I just I just quite resent anonymous journalists in a room working out, uh, ooh, is this, do we agree with this mm. or not? I think it's a dreadful thing. Anyway. Well, talking of ad spending, uh, it seems that podcast ad spending in the USA is up 43.7% year on year. That sounds like a massive jump. It does. Is that number right, James? Uh, it could be right. Uh, SMI is a very well-known and well-resourced media analysis company there uh, here in uh, Australia as well. Um, a spokesperson for the company said that there has not been any sort of pullback in advertising on podcasts due to economic pressures, which is uh, quite a statement, um, particularly quite a statement when um, yesterday Audis's financials came out, or Wednesday, Audis's financials came out uh, and uh, podcast revenues fell uh, in real terms. And the New York Times also published their quarter one financials and um, lower revenue from podcasts there as well. But no, uh, podcast ad spending in the US apparently up 43% year on year. Um, the interesting thing, though, is that podcasting is quite small in comparison to all of audio. Um, if you look at all of uh, online audio, podcasting is only 26%. So the majority is going to streaming audio, things like um, Spotify uh, and that sort of thing. So perhaps there's um, additional uh, opportunities for growth for podcasting there. Mm. Now, the winners of the 2023 Pulitzer Prize were announced. The winners included Gimlet Stolen, Surviving St. Michael's. It's the first podcast series to win both a Pulitzer Prize and a Peabody Award in the same year. That sounds very impressive. But, I mean, how does that translate into listener numbers and revenue, or does it not bother at all? Uh, I mean, I, I think with all of these things, you know, this is a award given in terms of quality of journalism, and that doesn't necessarily... Uh, instantly fit in terms of um, revenue um, or indeed success, you know, as you say. But I think, you know, that particular show, it's the first big award for Gimlet. Um, and to be able to get um, both the Pulitzer and Peabody Award um, and the uh, DuPont Columbia University Award as well uh, in the same uh, year, I think is a pretty good uh, thing. It's a story uh, about uh, what happened in uh, Canada um, and the, the residential schools in uh, Canada. It's uh, well worth a listen uh, as well. And there's a brand new uh, show uh, also uh, starting uh, on that uh, as well fairly uh, soon. I think, it, though, it's good news for podcasting because it does show that podcasting can be a very good place for investigative journalism. I just wonder how long before an AI wins a Pulitzer. That's all I would say. The Writers Guild are on yeah, strike well, yes. over it. They're not happy bunnies. 
Yes, no, indeed. I mean, the um, the writers are on strike, but that only affects uh, fiction podcasts currently. But uh, yes, I think um, AI is going to be is going to be an interesting thing. I have been playing today with um, uh, Google Bard, uh, which is available everywhere now, and uh, giving that a little a little play and seeing if I can um, save myself a little bit of time by using Google Bard. And it seems to be um, you know in, in, interesting. So who knows whether or not that will. Um, at some point end up winning awards. Hey, let's go on to uh, have a look at some uh, job news. Um, uh, Bad news at uh, Sony Music Entertainment, which has made some layoffs in its narrative podcast team, podcast marketing and sales. Um, They won't say quite how many people have gone, but, um, you know, worthwhile keeping an eye uh, on that. Good news for Miranda Kennedy, though. She's joined Vox as executive producer of Today Explained, which is their daily news show. Uh, She's got considerable experience of that. She was supervising senior editor NPR for Up First and Morning Edition. Um, So she knows a thing or two about that. And Megan Wastel, or maybe it's Wastel. I don't know. Anyway, she's left Global. Uh, Why are you interested in that? Well, she was director of podcasts and strategy for Global Player. And she's now going to work for Merlin Entertainments, which um, is an operator of an operator of visitor attractions, Merlin. Uh, they run fun fairs and stuff like that. Madam Two Swords. Yes, strange old uh, move, isn't it? Um, from director of podcast and strategy to be global mm. creative director. Uh, but still, but there we go. So uh, best of luck to her uh, for that. But, she, you know, she's no longer in podcasting. She's dead to us. Uh, if you're looking for a job, uh, Pod News has podcasting jobs across the industry and across the world, and they're free to post as well. It'll just take two minutes to add a new role, podnews.net slash jobs. Bit of an interesting fact about Madame Tussauds very quickly. Have you ever wondered what happens to waxworks that are no longer popular? Uh, I mean, presumably they melt them down. No, this is what's super spooky they take them to a warehouse in the city of london i've been there and they literally have them all there stacked up in a warehouse it is very spooky wow so you can see you know michael heseltine in there and uh, yes john gummer (laughs) 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 what a terrifying what a terrifying thing yeah they don't they don't melt them down no 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 well they keep them all there you go you could you could just melt them down you could melt down um you, you you could melt them down and use them as candles or something um, yes. Gwyneth Paltrow will be in there soon. Yes. Now, yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, moving on. The tech stuff. Tech stuff. On the Pod News Weekly Review. Yes, it's the stuff you'll find every Monday in the Pod News newsletter. Here's where we do all of the uh, tech talk. Uh, There's a new company called uh, Snips. Well, it's a company that's existed for a while called Snips, which allows you to save podcast highlights. They've just added Android Auto support, although it looks a bit clunky, to be fair. But it does allow drivers to save podcast highlights while they're driving. So um, that looks good. Um, And a very beautiful, privacy-friendly Android podcast app and Tenopod. Um, they have uh, updated um, the app. It's available now on Google Play version 3, uh, which has a brand new home screen, which is a really nice home screen. It gives you lots of um, choices of what to listen to next. It's got some good swipey swipey actions. I used it for a, a couple of hours uh, and it was uh, and it was very nice. Um, so if you are looking for a new podcast app, unfortunately it hasn't got very much of the new podcast namespace in it yet. Um, it's worthwhile giving it a go anyway uh, for uh, Android devices. It's on F-Droid as well. And Tenopod uh, is worthwhile taking a peek at. James, still no news of that Apple podcast for Android? No, still no news of Apple podcast for Android. I mean, they are going to do it because they're not stupid. Um, and every um, every week that they don't launch it, uh, of course, Spotify gets even more of an unassailable lead. Um, and so, of course, they're going to be launching uh, Apple Podcasts and Android soon. They must do, mustn't they? Uh, but still no news of that. Well, good news, James. Uh, for Apple, maybe. So uh, at Google I.O., they announced WebAssembly or WASM, uh, which means you can take native apps and put them directly into the browser within the Android app. So maybe they could just use a little bit of WebAssembly and take the uh, app and make it a native app on Android. There you go. Well, maybe, although who knows? I mean, that would mean that Apple podcasts would need more than one engineer, which uh, <laughs> they appear to have... 
they appear to have by the by the looks of the of the speed of, of all of the updates they appear to have uh, yeah one, one engineer there's a new version of uh, iOS uh, coming out I think next week I think they've they've just they've they've just announced it we don't know quite what's new in terms of Apple podcasts in there but you can you can bet that there'll be a very small amount of uh, new stuff in there mm, 16.5 right uh, last week uh, on the pod news show with Dave and Adam they talked about something called dynamic changing value splits and they demonstrated it on yes. the show which was basically the idea of playing music in the middle of a podcast and being able to have the splits change based on the value time currently. Um, and they did that last week. They did, yes. And, and uh, thank you for calling it the Pod News Show. It is, of course, the Podcasting 2.0 Show, but uh, I'm sure that they won't mind being called the Pod News Show. Uh, anyway, yes. <laughs> um, <true>. And very <laughs> clever it was, too. Um, if you were listening in a supporting app, of course, um, then as soon as Joe Martin came on and started warbling at us about something or other. Then if you were to boost or if you were just listening and um, and, and uh, paying using uh, streaming sats, automatically Joe Martin would get some, um, which is really neat. So if you think of how a music show might work in the future, you might be playing, you know, 10... 12 tracks in an hour um, and as you play the musician gets um, the money um, as uh, their particular song is uh, playing so very cool and seemed to work uh, quite nicely didn't seem to break anything which is all, always a good plan um, so that was a smart test um, to uh, hear. It wouldn't have worked if it was live, but it did work um, uh, in terms of on demand. Uh, they had a, a, a very uh, a, a, a very good sounding guest uh, th- th- this week on the podcasting 2.0 um, board board meeting as well. Uh, Sam Sam Sethi. Oh, uh, yes. It was you. Yes. Yes. yes you I... were very good. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, I thought I'd. Uh... Well, take everything you've taught me, and I thought I'd just regurgitate it. It's very easy. Yes, yes. It was always good to hear Adam criticising your your uh, editing. That's why we handed it over to you. No, that's why we handed it over to you. Let's be clear. Yes, <laughs> it's very very good to hear that. So, um, but no, it was uh, it was a good show. So um, so hurrah! And it's really good to hear that uh, Adam is well, and um, and you know all of the. Uh, quite horrifying work that he's having done. Um, it's good to hear that uh, he was uh, certainly uh, sounding well on the show. So good for him. All I'd say is kids don't touch drugs. Now, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Got no idea where that's come from. But anyway, moving on. Uh, Headliner uh, has announced that it has created six and a half million short form podcast videos so far. You probably know Headliner for the big long form shows that they do on YouTube. So if you were, for example, were listening on to this show on uh, YouTube, then that's done by Headliner and that's why it looks so beautiful. But they also do short form videos as well. Apparently those work really, really well on social media. Uh, so that is good. And they are working on something on WordPress. Yeah, I mean, they've had this product for a while called Disco, which was the ability to take content uh, and link it. But now they've made that free. So they're introducing Disco Free. It's a WordPress plugin. And what it allows you to do, it's easy to use as a podcast discovery tool, they say. So you add that to your WordPress install. And what it will look at is the text within your blog posts. And it will contextually try and find a relevant podcast or episode to place at the bottom. A bit like one of those Tambolo type things where they have snippets of audio. Oh, yeah. So it's going Tabula. yeah 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 yeah. So it's going back against your own content to find podcasts that you might have done that you can then promote alongside your own content. Yeah, well, there's a thing. It's worthwhile keeping an eye open uh, for that. Also worthwhile keeping an eye open for what Google I.O. announced. They announced all kinds of stuff uh, to do with AI because, of course, they did, didn't they? Um, And uh, it's tedious and dull. But they did also announce a thing called Baseline, uh, which is very good if you're a web developer in that, um, I mean, what they seem as if they've basically done is that they have um, uh, bought caniuse.com uh, which is a really easy and simple and straightforward, you know, can I use the mark tag? Can I use the bold tag? Um, and they've basically launched a thing called Baseline, 
which uh, flags web features that developers can rely on all browsers supporting, so they say. Um, uh, and they're working with Mozilla's Firefox, Apple's Safari, and Microsoft's Edge. Well, Microsoft's Edge is much the same as Google Chrome anyway, but, uh, you know, the other two aren't. Um, but, uh, yeah, so Baseline looks quite interesting. Um, I've noticed it's already live on the Mozilla um, uh, website, so that's all very uh, smart. And um, yeah, do you think there are sort of... Um, uh, things that podcasting can learn out of that? Yeah, I mean, look, the Podcasting Standards Project, you know, great that it's announced, great that it's launched, and now I want to see something coming out of it more than just a mm. couple of tags um, and, a, a, and a logo. And again, I think I've been banging this drum and, you know, we want the wall of fame or shame, whatever you want to call it, but something similar to can I use this or now baseline where you know the podcasting standards project says right here's all the hosts here's what they currently support and here's what they don't support and just let's get a table of this because right oh, now great, wouldn't it yeah right now you know if you're an app developer you're going well I don't know if Buzzsprout support this don't know if RSS support that blah blah yes. blah it would just be really you quick were, and you cool. You were banging on about this last week. Um, I was. And, and I was saying, yes, an Airtable would be a good idea. Uh, you've reminded me that Nick from Vizzy has done quite a lot of uh, work on uh, chapter support in various apps as well um, and has sent me a spreadsheet, which I still haven't done anything with. So I really ought to be doing something with that as well. But I do think that there's something there. Um, and I love the idea of putting that into the podcasting standards project. You know, mm. if... If we are uh, saying that, for example, um, episode images are a good thing, then let's name and shame the, the apps that don't support it. Exactly. Um, uh, that don't support it properly for all shows. Uh, I think that that would be a good idea. So, yeah, I mean, it would be great to hear something from the Podcasting Standards Project. Um, I covered their launch um, a PR and that's it. Haven't heard a sausage out of that uh, group uh, since. Um, I do hope it's not going to go away um, because I think it's really, really needed. Um, so, um, you, you know, it'd be good to see a little bit more uh, from them. Uh, one final uh, thing in terms of... Um, tech, and I think this is pretty cool, is uh, Orphonic, uh, which um, many people use to uh, tidy their audio up. And uh, I'm told that Buzzsprout uses it under the hood as well for their magic mastering. They've added an automated silence cutting service. So if you have great big gaps of uh, silence in your podcast, it will automatically cut those out, which is nice. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand how that works because Descript do, does it as well and various other companies do it. Often you've said Overcast does this as well, but that's an app, so that must do it in post-production. So how does Overcast do it? Yeah, so Overcast and Pocket Casts and various other things have a silence skip service uh, in those uh, apps as well. I think reading the press release from Orphonic, I think they're basically doing this as a, you know, big gaps um, for in, if you're in the, the production process. So it will basically get rid of those bits where you went off to answer the door uh, and do all of that. So it will get rid of all of those automatically. Um, I would personally like when I upload a podcast to a podcast platform, it spots that there's, you know, more than five seconds of silence and goes, are you sure that this is properly edited? Um, or indeed edits, edits those out anyway. Um, I've been caught out in the past uh, doing that and it'd be quite nice uh, if that were the case. So um, yeah, but to, you know, always good to see more of these tools appearing to automatically catch um, mistakes and stuff like that um, from these, um, uh, you know, on these services. Podcast events on the Pod News Weekly Review. Well, in events and awards this week, um, the German-speaking public can now vote for the Deutsche Podcast Prize. You've until May the 28th. Just do a Google search uh, for that if you know how to spell that. And if you don't know how to spell it, you're not German and you can't vote. Um, the DuPont Columbia Awards are open for submissions as well. If you've done what they call important work um, uh, from uh, July the 1st last year to the end of June this year that features deep original reporting in the public interest, um, then you should be entering those uh, awards. They are very prestigious uh, in uh, the UK. In 
very prestigious in the US. Uh, moving on to uh, events, um, I'm looking forward to going to Auckland. You always know when it's time for me to go to Auckland because um, uh, there's no, there's more massive floods and uh, the government has uh, just uh, announced uh, an emergency um, in uh, Auckland. And so, of course, I'm going to be flying into that on uh, Friday. Um, so, uh, of course, I'm going to be flying into that uh, today, so that's going to be good fun. Um, but uh, the New Zealand Podcast Summit uh, is uh, tomorrow, uh, Saturday, in uh, Auckland. There's all kinds of other people there. Uh, Tim Watkin from RNZ, who's a great chap. Uh, Richard Palmer is making the trip from Sydney, uh, who works at uh, Omni Studio alongside uh, Sharon Taylor as well. Uh, and uh, there will be a Pod News Pod Coaster, the goodie bag. Um, which is a good thing. Uh, other things going on, uh, podcast movement in Denver, of course, in August, the British Podcast Awards in September, Radio Days North America in Toronto in June, the Dubai Podfest uh, is returning next week as well. And of course, the podcast show 2023 in London in just a couple of weeks time. Yeah, I basically bumped into Darby Doris. I was at the podcasting pod pitch at city university darby was one of the uh judges and i thought i'd ask him about what he's doing with listen but also more importantly what they're doing on the rise up stage at podcast show for those who don't know us we are one of the uk's biggest and leading audio production companies so we're sort of long-standing audio company in the uk and we have a sort of heritage in radio we still make a ton of radio and that's kind of a long-standing bit of the business been there for a very long time but obviously podcasting is what we moved into and became the sort of the largest kind of growth area of the business and we make i suppose the best way to kind of carve up our podcast slate is into three three buckets really so we make a huge amount of kind of commissioned content so for the big commissioners like titting about with french and saunders for for audible and they a ton of stuff for them or 28 ish days later last year was a kind of brilliant commission about the menstrual cycle with india rackerson that was for bbc radio 4 bbc sounds uh, you know and then our next bucket if you like is for branded and we still make an absolute ton of kind of branded podcasts direct with brands or with agencies and that's a still a really important part of the business and then the final bucket is our original so we launched our first listen original towards the end of last year which perhaps we'll come on to which is a program called unboxed with jordan schwarzenberger so yeah that's the way to to summarize the content we do and then i think that we make we make a huge variety really of genre and format so hopefully some of those i've referenced give you a sense of that but we make you know love island the morning after the official itv podcast we make built to thrive with dr rung and chatterjee which is a daily wellness podcast for, for amazon music wondery you know a real kind of breadth of content across the kind of entertainment and narrative kind of opportunities no a lovely wide selection there in the slate how do people because obviously last night we were at pod pitch which is basically students pitching an idea about a new podcast they might like to create and, you know it was a bit of fun but in the real world how does somebody approach say listen with an idea you know and what do you look for when you are commissioning yeah so we're always having conversations and i think that it doesn't just have to come to me like i'm always open to to, to hearing ideas and i'm you know very available on all the sort of obvious social platforms and via email which is just darby at listen.co.uk so always open to approaches and they're kind of constant to be honest with you which is a good thing and they're not all they're not all going to be viable they're always going to go forward but i you know would encourage other you know other producers out there as well to kind of have conversations with us you know on all of my exec team and it's wildly different to where it was three, four, five years ago. And I think we all know that there's sort of success stories that happened then that probably wouldn't happen in the same way now. And I think that's across like the full spectrum in terms of like, you know, the kind of content that's out there. So, so yeah, I think we're really tough on them, but we're really open to kind of those conversations. And they're the fun bit of the job, which is having those conversations with, with people, journalists and freelancers and all sorts of other kind of entities, if you like, that bring us ideas or bring us a kernel of something and then kind of working on that. You know, but it's a slow process in all honesty. I think probably it's slower now than it ever has been because everyone's tough on ideas and commissions are, are hugely important. There's probably fewer of them than there were. You know, people are going kind of a bit slower and going bigger, I would say. And so, and we're doing that too. And I think like, you know, that's across the board. So yeah, but very much keen to hear from people always. And you know, like I say, that's a fun bit of the job. 
How do you metric success then? I mean, what is success to you? Is it downloads? Is it revenue generated? Is it recommissioning from a third party, a brand or, you know, a commissioning agency? What does success mean to you? Yeah, that's a great question, isn't it? I think for us, because it's, it, you know, what's different about us to some podcast organisations is we've, uh, those buckets I was talking through, we've got so many bits to listen. And, and I think that's part of our success, really, is that gives us ultimately flexibility to be able to kind of pivot when the market's doing something or not doing something. And so therefore, you know, for us about the growth of the business, we've got to be, you know, commercially viable. But it's also about, you know, the optics of stuff, isn't it? It's about kind of going, actually, you know, here's a podcast that we might want to make because we think that it's creatively ambitious. And that's a kind of direction that we want to put ourselves in might not be the most commercially viable. On the flip side, we might look at something and go, that's not exactly the most exciting thing that that we're going to make, but we're going to make it because actually that's an important part of the business and it will be, you know, something that's kicking off a margin and helping fund other parts of the company and the team and everything else. So I think that it's a hard question to answer, to be honest with you. I think success is kind of means lots of different things. And I think we look at it, we look at all of those options, depending on what the thing is on the table, really, and kind of go, you know, and who's funding it as well, if it's an original that we're self-funding, we're kind of, you know, we're looking at that in a different way to something that might be commissioned, you know. So all of those things, I think, are probably probably not kind of new for most people listening to this. I think that's the, the process you'd expect. And I think it's about, yeah, just kind of examining any idea and any commissioning, kind of thinking, is it right for us? Should we be doing it for any of or all of those reasons, really? I just wanted to ask, you've touched on YouTube and TikTok. I mean, First of all, you know, what are your thoughts on YouTube now getting into the podcasting world? I put that in air quotes. And secondly, do you find a difference in the audiences that come to you? Because, you know, one's a lean back medium, one's a, you know, walk away background medium, the audio part. So, yeah, first of all, you know, what are your thoughts on YouTube? And secondly, what's the different audiences now that you've had success within those three mediums? Yeah, yeah, really interesting, isn't it? It's a really interesting time. I think that, yeah, it's just an evolution, really, of podcasting and where it's been and where it's going. And I think there's that conversation that certainly I've been having a lot. I think everyone's having at the moment about what is a podcast, <laughs> you know, reassessing what it really means to be a podcast and, you know, the conversation around the RSS and the conversation around YouTube. And and I think that, that I don't think there's really a clear answer yet on that is my, on, is my honest answer. You know, I think that, YouTube are clearly really important in the game. There's massive audience there, different demographic to, let's say, Apple Podcasts when you're looking at Apple or, you know, other DSPs. So, yeah, kind of huge opportunity, really. I think that's how we see it is real opportunity. And I think it's about understanding the role of video in podcasting. And actually, there isn't one one answer to that because the role of video for something like Unbox, where we're releasing full length video episodes on YouTube, but also kind of native in Spotify as well, is entirely different to a video strategy that we might apply for a narrative box set mini series, six part, you know, it's going to be wildly different. And so I think it's about knowing really the role of video in podcasting understanding the product that you're creating and the brand and how people are going to engage with it, where they're going to engage with it. And that does come back to to the target audience and the audience you're expecting. I think it's about understanding the role of video, understanding about the content you're creating, and then understanding about the audience you're uh, likely to attract, wanting to attract, or then are attracting. Does that answer your second part of your question? It does, yeah. No, I mean, look, I think all three have a different feel. I mean, you know, I'm a consumer of three platforms uh, and I have them in different modes when I'm I'm doing... I wouldn't want to have a long format TikTok. That wouldn't make sense. I know you can do longer formats. It just doesn't feel... It's much more of a flick, making a cup of tea, flick three or four videos, whatever it may be. YouTube maybe when I'm, you know, want to sit back and lean back into something and just like, just let something longer format play out at me. And then, you know, a bit like a TV show. And then audio is probably when I'm walking the dog or I'm gardening or something else. And it, it, it's time and place and context for me with the different mediums. In terms of your monetizations, is it advertising driven then? Is that the monetization that you do today? Is it subscription driven? What's the two plans? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So it's advertising driven. But yeah, subscription as well. I think we're just, again, we're sort of, yeah, mindful of creating something that, that 
feels right for the audience and right for the platforms that they're inhabiting and the sort of the, you know, where the majority of the audience for anything that we're creating live, if you like. So I think that subscriptions continues to be a, you know, a really important kind of growth area of the industry. And we're sort of really mindful of that. But I think it's about, you know, as has been proven, really, when you look at the sort of subscriptions that are doing well in podcasting, it's about creating proper value for the audience, isn't it? It's about creating proper kind of additional content as opposed to what there is quite a lot of, which is kind of just carving off a bit or a bit of the kind of stuff that hit the cutting room floor and shoving it behind a paywall. So I think it's, again, it comes back to kind of deep understanding of your audience and what do they actually want and why are they there in the first place and have you kind of created a proper sense of community and therefore then they might be interested in paying for something. So I think, yeah, it's about knowing the role of subs again, I think in podcasting it is key. Now let's move on to the podcast show, 24th, 25th of May. There is a preview on the 23rd. It's very interesting. I went there last year. I think you were there last year. They did a great job, Jason and the team. I'm really looking forward to this year's event. I think it's going to be even bigger and better, you know. And um, one of the things that I that stood out for me was the fact that listeners got this massive, great big stage. You've got, I don't know how many speakers on the stage, but it's significant. What, first of all, why have you taken such a big presence and gone for this big stage? I mean, what is this? Uh, and then... Talk me through some of the people that we might be able to see there. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, yeah, you know, as you said, I was there last year as as you were. And I think that we, you know, I definitely and the rest of us at Listen recognise how great it was, really. I think I, I, and the event itself just sort of caught the moment, I think, really well, which was they mm-hmm. chose not to do it in the pan- launch it in the pandemic because they'd originally planned to, you know, had that not happened and launch it after the pandemic when actually I'm sure you probably felt the same, but most of us have been locked away for a long time. And, you know, there hadn't been something of that scale for the podcasting industry and the podcast industry had evolved and grown during that time as well. So it was just great. We met loads and loads of people, lots of young aspirational creators, lots of people in the industry you haven't seen for years, you know, and made an absolute ton of kind of connections and, you know, and networking and everything else out of it which is all good and healthy. So I think that, yeah, very excited, obviously, about this year's event. And so, yeah, I want to make a bit more of a statement, really, to put Listen at the front and centre of that. And, yeah, I was very aware of the Rise Up stages last year. And so we have thought really carefully about this. And I think it would be good to yeah, talk you through the overarching theme, really, of what we're doing with this stage, because I think mm. that, you know, you've been to as many of these events as I have, and you often do just hear different versions of the same conversation had in different places around the world and i think it's you know trying to be as distinctive as possible for anyone who's speaking there and so we're sort of you know we're doing a session with linkedin which is sort of all about understanding why that platform can actually be brilliant for sort of social strategy for podcasters we've got a session which i'm chairing which is all about sort of the intersection between TV and podcasting and the creator economy, which has got Sky on it. It's got Netflix. It's got India, who's our host for uh, Love Island the morning after. We've got the only appearance from YouTube at the podcast show this year. (laughs) Um, Can I have question one, please? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think there's going to be a few people in the audience, aren't there, for that one? I think you need need a few bodyguards for poor Alison. Oi, oi, where's question two? Yeah, we're going to whisk her out the back and into a taxi (laughs) as soon as it finishes. But yeah, so so Alison Lomax, MD of YouTube UK, appearing with us alongside the brilliant Patricia Bright and George on that panel and then my my partner in josh josh adley who mm-hmm. listens md chairing that one so that would be yeah a brilliant session not to be missed and then yeah a really great one on sort of just asking that that question you know are creators really the sort of future of podcasting and that's with grace beverly who's obviously fantastic johnny manser from from spotify and jordan hosting that one marta bino who's from business insider and will nor will ne who's who's that brilliant podcaster who recently knocked joe rogan off the top of the charts Mm. so yeah some great sort of you know like i say a kind of great mix of talent of commissioners and other people who are sort of really kind of interesting exciting in 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 the podcast space right now and kind of the cutting edge and and the kind of final one that i hadn't mentioned was one which really hits at what you were saying earlier really around the role of video and that Mm. kind of intersection between video and audio and what is a podcast anymore. We've got a sort of session on shows versus podcasts and yeah, kind of how creators are turning the idea of podcasting on its head, which is 
which is going to be great with Shelby from UTA and with Madeline RG and Jordan as well. So I'm trying to remember, and I don't think I've missed any of them, but there's a, there's, there's a lot. There's a lot. The ones I can see, you've, you've covered yourself in glory. You're okay. <laughs> <laughs> you won't have a phone call suit. Oi, why wasn't uh, I mentioned? I'm not doing it anymore because you, you forgot to mention me. No, it's really rich. It's, I'm just excited about it, to be honest with you. It's going to be fun. It's going to be varied. And I really hope that we can offer up a lot of insights from people who are yeah doing things a bit differently, doing stuff outside of podcasting that informs it. Yeah, kind of, you know, I hope that it's useful for anyone who comes down. So, yeah, we'll be there. And that's on the 24th. So we're taking the stage for the whole, the first day. Yeah. Brilliant. Now, looking forward to all of those. Last but not least, congratulations as well. One of your staff just won a face to watch in pod. What was that? Yeah. Yeah. The brilliant Georgia, Georgia Arundel. So she's, yeah, she only joined us last, last year, last summer. And she is a face to watch. Yeah, she's fantastic. She's doing all sorts for us. She's done the recent series of Love Island's The Morning After. And another great one that she's just polished off was the latest series of Dr. Rungan Chatterjee's wellness series that we make daily, daily wellness series for Wondery Amazon, which is called Built to Thrive. And so she's just literally just finished, wrapped up on that. She's just gone into a really exciting narrative production pre-production at the moment so she's fantastic really pleased to see her in there today um and she yeah she deserves it and there's been a long thread of celebration as you can imagine on the the internal listen emails and slack celebrating georgia today so we'll get some champagne later Ah, uh, yeah, no expense bad well done darby norris director of content at listen thank you so much now if someone wants to get hold of you or get to find out more of what's on your slate or just to find out what's going on at the podcast show, where would they go? Yeah, so look for Listen in all the obvious places. Come to us, listen.co.uk, or find us on LinkedIn or, you know, all the other socials. We're there. And you can do the same with me as well. You know, I'm ever present, Sam. I'm everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> of all things to all people. No, I'm around. So, yeah, find me. Find me on LinkedIn or somewhere. Yeah. Or drop me, yeah, drop me an email, which is just darby at listen.co.uk. Really happy to... Always happy to talk to people in the podcast industry, definitely. And uh, yeah, hope to see a lot of people down at the podcast show. Come have a chat. I'll be around. Brilliant. Darby, thank you so much. Speak to you soon. Thanks, Sam. Darby Doris from Listen. Looking forward to seeing him at the podcast show uh, in just a couple of weeks' time in that there, London. And don't forget about our events too. Pod News Live, uh, the next one is in Salford on the 13th of June. If you don't know where that is, it's next to Manchester. If you don't know where that is, it's the north of England. If you don't know where that is, just off Europe. But they don't like talking about it. Uh, on uh, June the 13th, uh, you can grab tickets for that, podnews.net slash live. And also Pod News Live in London is happening on the 27th of September. September. Can we talk about the venue yet for that? Yes, we can confirm it's going to be the White City Soho House uh, venue, which is the old uh, BBC uh, White City Studios. So, yeah. Yes, old TV centre. Mm. Uh, so if you fancy a wander around the old uh, television centre, um, then we, we, we can guarantee uh, you'll, you'll be able to get into at least one room. But <laughs> I was going to say, I think are. most of those are somebody's people's private flats now, James. I don't it, think we can it, really indeed. guide somebody's anyone around it. <laughs> yes. Some of these people's people's private flats where I used to go to the occasional uh, the occasional depressing meeting. Um, so I, I do hope that they've uh, made those rooms uh, a little bit nicer. But anyway, uh, 27th of September, that's happening. Podnews.net slash live to find out more information about that. And there are more events, both paid for and free at Podnews. If you're organising something, you should tell the world about it too. It's free to be listed. Podnews.net slash events. Boostergram. Boostergram. Corner. Corner. Corner on the Pod News Weekly Review. Oh, it's our favourite time of the week, Sam. It's time for Boostergram Corner. And uh, this is an exciting um, message that we've got from Chad F., isn't it? Yes, he says sending a test boost from Podcast Guru on iOS. So he sent us yes. 2112 sucks. Yes, and that basically means that Podcast Guru is just getting ready to turn on Boostergrams and uh, support for streaming sets. So that's going to be a very exciting thing. Uh, so thrilled, uh, the Podcast Guru, which is a really nice looking app. Uh, it's on iOS and on Android, and they're going to be supporting Boostergrams on both of those. Who knows? It might even be out. Uh, as we speak. Um, but uh, well worth a, a peek. Thank you, uh, Chad, for your uh, two double one two sats. Uh, that's good of you. Kyrin from the Mere Mortals podcast. My second chat with Dave came out this week. 
we finally got to the heart of what's making him sick all of the time. I'm presuming this is Dave Jones. Indeed. Uh, but we also had some fun value for value chat and why everyone is pumped for music. And he's given us four, three, two, one sats. Kyron, uh, thank you so much. And uh, the Mere Mortals podcast is well worth a listen. Um, Kyron properly does his research. He does. And uh, there's a show with you. Yes. And there's a show with me, uh, if you go back. Uh, so well worth uh, a listen uh, to that as well. Uh, Silas on Linux uh, said, what if you did a comparison chart between advertising solutions comparing each host slash company's programmatic solution, how high the CPM is also compared to averages for host read ads or things like bus sprout ads, where it's an in-between? Or maybe an article could be helpful for people who want to start podcasting with the final goal of financially sustaining themselves with the podcast. I'm going to put that through chat GBT to understand that in a minute. But anyway, that's a 3,000 no, sats. I, I, know, I know exactly what Good. Silas on Linux or Silas on Linux uh, is uh, saying, yes, absolutely. Yes, that would be an amazing comparison chart. Let's focus firstly on the comparison chart of the functions and features that uh, podcast hosts and podcast apps have. And then, yeah, absolutely, let's move on to ad tech as well. <laughs> why why Got not? It. Got it. Why not? What could, what, what could possibly go wrong there? Mm. Um, but uh, yes, uh, Silas, thank you uh, so much for that. And thank you for the sats uh, as well. We much appreciate them. And Gene Bean, as well. Mad props to Oscar for the implementation of transcripts within Fountain. They look really good. I think, Gene Bean, you're talking about a beta that you shouldn't be talking about yet because I don't think they're launched yet. Mm. Um, but when they get launched, I'm told that they'll look really, really good. Now, uh, row of ducks. Now, can from, I point out, uh, Gene Bean. Yes. <laughs> you're an advisor. Have you got that beta? Uh, have I got the beta? I probably do have the beta. Right. Yes, I have been. Uh, in fact, uh, yesterday's job, one of yesterday's jobs was uh, writing Fountain's um, article about uh, transcripts and um, shamelessly adding, uh, you know, links to various places and making sure that it was really clear. Um, so I enjoyed uh, doing that. And I'm looking forward to uh, meeting Oscars because I've not met Oscar oh yet uh, and uh, Nick. <laughs> Looking forward to meeting them uh, the week of the podcast show. Yeah. We're uh, going out and um, camping out in their office for a little bit. You may hear a, a pod news daily, which has been recorded in their office uh, as well. So that should be um, good fun. But uh, yes, looking forward uh, to and, that. And in case anyone keeps asking, we keep promising Oscar on this show. We do keep promising oh, yeah, Oscar on this show. That? Well, Oscar keeps going, I'm not quite ready yet. So... <laughs> yes. So as an advisor, can you kick him up the backside to tell him oh. to hurry up and get ready, please? Well, let's find out. Let's find out when I see him in a couple of weeks. Let's find out whether we yes. can do it then. Uh, if you get value from what we do, the Pod News Weekly Review is, is separate from Pod News. Sam and I share everything from this show. So we really appreciate your support so we can continue making it. Um, you can become a power supporter at weekly.podnews.net if you've got a credit card burning a hole in your pocket right now. Uh, if you fancy supporting Tim Apple, then you can subscribe subscribe in Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash podnews. One of these days I'm going to actually understand the Apple Podcasts Connect system so I can actually understand whether or not we've got any subscribers because I don't know. Um, or you can support us with sats, which is what we prefer by hitting the boost button in your podcast app. If you don't have a boost button in your podcast app, um, then, I mean, really, where are you? But uh, podnews.net slash new podcast apps will help you find a new one. And of course, I would recommend Fountain. Now, what's happening for you this week? Sam? Well, as I said, I met up with Darby Doris over at Pod Pitch at City University this week. Uh, really good to see all the students on their journalism course mm. pitching new podcast ideas. There was Matt Hill there and uh, Elena Guthrie from History Hits. So yeah, it was a good evening. Some three or four that were really good standouts. A couple of were, you know, mm, and one or two hit the cutting room floor. But other than that, it was very good. Um, and of course, I mentioned that I was on with Dave and Adam last week talking about pod fans and mm. various other things to do with podcasting 2.0. So that was a fun evening. Um, and lastly, I can't tell you any more about it, but I was really pleased to catch up with Ellie Rubenstein, who's the CEO of Pocket Cast and the lead on that. Um, they are doing stuff with the Podcasting Index 2.0, and hopefully Ellie will be with us in, well, not sure the time frame, but she will be on this show shortly um, to talk about what Pocket Cast are doing in that market space. Oh, well, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing more about that. That should be fun. Maybe she'll come on before Oscar. We never know. 
maybe. <laughs> now, James, what's happening for you? You're only you're only saying that just so that you can uh, wind Oscar up, aren't you? I think that, I am. I think that's the thing. <laughs> and uh, I've yes. met him, so it's a, I've got at least one advantage over you. I have actually met Oscar twice. <laughs> no, I had a really good chat with uh, Patrick Hill from Disctopia for the Podcast Business Journal. Uh, you'll find that in next week's edition of the Podcast Business Journal, podcastbusinessjournal.com. This week, uh, Ben Richardson from rss.com. Uh, is on talking about what that company is doing in Mexico. Because you might think it's just a podcast hosting company, but oh no, they're doing other things in Mexico. Um, So I thought I'd find out a little bit more about what's going on uh, there. Um, I also managed to completely sleep in and miss a a very important meeting that I was due to have. So that was good. Um, (laughs) Note to self, uh, always check before you go to sleep whether or not you're supposed to be waking up early. Uh, that's probably a good plan. Um, uh, what I'm very much looking forward to is uh, going to uh, New Zealand over the weekend, as I mentioned before. Um, I've got a, a, a basically a day and a half there. Uh, it's only four hours flight away, but uh, looking forward uh, to that, to the New Zealand Podcast Summit. Uh, so I will be back next week with all kinds of news and information about how uh, the New Zealand uh, podcast uh, um the New Zealand podcast industry uh, is uh, working. I also have to do a presentation to some people in Italy on Monday, um, which um, I'm looking forward to, even if I haven't written that presentation, nor have I written the presentation yet for New Zealand, nor have I written the presentation for the podcast show London. And all of those are due uh, in about three hours. So, oh, um, good luck. Good. So that'll be fun. Um, and uh, so I better go. Uh, that's it for this week. Yes, thank you to our guests. And uh, if you want to give us feedback using email, uh, you, you can do that at weekly at podnews.net or send us a boost grab. And if your podcast mm. app doesn't support boost, as you said, James, what are you doing? Grab a new app from podnews.net forward slash new podcast apps. Our music is from Studio Dragonfly. Our voiceover is Sheila D. We're hosted and sponsored by Buzzsprout. Podcast hosting made easy. Get updated every day. Subscribe to our newsletter at podnews.net. Tell your friends and grow the show. And support us. And support us. The Pod News Weekly Review will return next week. Keep listening.